Coming only to theaters June 18. Experience an all-new motion picture event. Tarzan. Walt Disney Pictures proudly presents Tarzan. Coming June 18. Disney's Tarzan was released in theaters in 1999, and it was a good movie. Great animation is expected from Disney, a lot of fun moments, and of course, all those classic songs by Phil Collins that are debatable whether or not they're even good. All I'm saying is, South Park should have won the Oscar that year. Disney's animated film division did a pretty great job of making a Disney-fied version of Edgar Rice Burroughs' character to the big screen, making what many of us young kids first impression of Tarzan. Of course, like pretty much every Disney movie, it did great in theaters, but most notably, it was the first Disney animated film to gross over $4,000 since their world-conquering hit, The Lion King, which not counting re-releases, grossed over $800,000. After The Lion King, much of their releases did at the very least good, I mean all of them made their money back not counting promotion, but Tarzan was the first to go over the 400,000 mark and become another big hit for the studio. So you know what that means? Franchise! Following Tarzan's success, Disney was more than happy to give more Tarzan content to the fans. Most notably two years after the film, Disney's TV animation department would give us The Legend of Tarzan, a Saturday morning cartoon airing originally on UPN for one season. Technically, there's two seasons, one season consisting of three episodes added together into a direct-to-video movie, Tarzan and Jane, but maybe some of those episodes did air on TV in reruns, so it can technically be two seasons? I don't know. Anyways, as for my opinion on the show after only watching a few episodes, it's average. Yeah, it feels like a Disney movie crammed into the Saturday morning machine to pump out a very alright show. Solid enough for the kids. At the very least, there's a hot chick who controls an army of bar leopard furries. I'm glad to have known that. The Legend of Tarzan would not be the only product in 2001 to get love, as Disney would expand past watchable entertainment and into interactable entertainment in the world of video games, as they would commission a standalone game for the franchise to release on the launch of the GameCube, Tarzan Untamed. Now this isn't the first Disney Tarzan game, that of course would be the tie-in game released in 1999 to go along with promoting the movie. It's a decent enough game for what it is, but the major difference between these two games is that one was a simple little tie-in game to help promote the movie while it was new, and the other was to stand on its own within the Disney Tarzan franchise. Of course this could have been meant as promotion of the TV show, as the plot itself feels like it could be an episode. Following the events of the first movie, Jane and Tarzan are happily married and ready to have some jungle sex when some asshole out of Britain is making a ruckus in Tarzan's homeland, and of course he's gotta put a stop to it. And so right off the bat, this game is not the prettiest when it comes to character models. Like, it feels like this game started off on the Nintendo 64 and got slightly more polished when production moved to the GameCube. Also, I forgot to mention this game was also on PlayStation 2, which its version released only a few days prior. It's ugly, yes, but that's majorly an issue in the cutscenes. In game, they're passable. Nothing too exciting, but thankfully a game like this isn't about staring at the graphics, it's about the gameplay. And Tarzan Untamed has three different modes of gameplay to go through. The first and the most common of them is standard platforming, easily the worst out of the three. The level design in this game is how you say... primitive, no pun intended. Usually Tarzan will walk down a path and jump past an obstacle or get the timing right on a vine swing. I know this sounds like I'm generalizing all platformers here, but in other better platformers, there's this feel like there's an actual challenge and action required for you to get to the goal. Here it's just walking and then maybe dealing with an issue. Like sometimes level design is so straightforward it's literally a vine you walk across. And if you want a good example of how boringly straightforward these levels are, in each of these levels there's three trapped baby apes that you free and bring back to their mothers. And what happens when you don't bring one back to their mother? I don't know. I never bothered to find out because it's no real challenge. You can't miss either the babies or the mothers on your way to the finish line, which makes me beg the question, why was this even implemented? Also meet Turk, aka Rosie O'Donnell Gorilla, who tells you you can collect film reels along the way? I'm not sure what that's about. Enemies are in this game, but why bother? They're easily ignorable. 
Like this woman throwing spears at you? Try attacking at her and it feels like a century before it can even hit her while she pelted half her life away. It's easier just to run past her. Although I do like what happens when you make her fall. Now that's hilarious. But if you want to see how laughably bad these enemies can be, occasionally you'll come across an enemy that'll put you into a struggle where all you have to do is spam the B button and they're taken care of. Yep, that was it. Looks like Tarzan didn't even have to break a sweat. But I think the most frustrating thing about this game is its contrast. This is not a game you want to play during the day or with the lights on because things will seem a lot more hidden to you as everything has this tinted black quality to it. One of the worst instances is where I was sliding down this hollow tree and there were branches in the way that hurt you if you touched them. Well, I couldn't see a damn thing and died plenty of times during this part until I turned my lights off. And it just rubbed salt into the wound, sometimes Tarzan would just barely budge when I tried to move. Yeah, these levels are a joke, but I guess to give one positive before I move on, the level's art design and structure on how you move throughout them is very well crafted, I think. I like how Tarzan climbs up walls to get further into the game or even walk through hollow logs. It's very creative, especially how expansive they feel. Like it really feels like you're going deeper and deeper into the jungle and it's probably the most next gen feel this game has going for it that you couldn't really do on previous consoles, if that makes sense. But beyond that, the platforming levels are super ho-hum. Thankfully the next one isn't so bad, in fact it's the best part of this game, where you surf down the river avoiding obstacles and doing tricks in the water for points, including sliding across tree branches like in the movie. It's surprisingly a lot of fun, and I can get why they made it the cover to the game, because it's easily the only real selling point. It's kinda strange how in Europe and Japan this game was given the title Tarzan Free Ride, probably giving consumers the idea that all you do in the game is this river surfing mode, which you don't. It's only two whole levels, and that sucks. Oh well, for what it is, at least it's a fun little mindless mode. And finally, the last mode is where Tarzan grabs a bird and goes water skiing across the river. It's a bit strange and overall a bit annoying. You gotta spend most of this mode perfectly avoiding obstacles and refilling on bananas just to keep your health in check. And that's it. It honestly feels like the hitboxes on this mode are so wonky, especially involving this, what, river algae that hurts Tarzan? I mean, there isn't a lot to say on this one. It's mindless like river surfing, but not as fun. It feels like levels in a throwaway game on Super Nintendo, not for something two generations later. And you'll be crashing into so many things in this game that you don't really feel like Tarzan, but more like George of the Jungle. Watch out for that tree. Soon enough you'll reach a boss fight, and I have to admit, I've never seen a set of boss fights that are so bad, yet so hilarious at the same time. Much like those enemies in the platforming sections, you have to tap the B button to actually defeat them. Only here you have a cutscene play while you tap that actually reverses itself if you're slacking behind. So you can make a pretty amusing video of Tarzan struggling with an adversary back and forth, back and forth, and yeah, this was the most fun I had with this game. And get this, when you finally tap all the way, all that's left is to tap a certain string of buttons, and you win. You might have to do this a few more times if the boss has more health, but that's the boss fight. How amazingly awful. There's an extra mode you can do where you bungee off a cliff and get through the right holes without crashing to get deep enough to collect a film reel, and as a simple little extra mode goes, it's actually pretty fun to try and do. I don't mind. But again, what are these film reels for? Well guess what? Jane goes missing over the course of the game, and once you reach a certain level and have an interaction with Jane's father, who determines you can find Jane by looking over the film reels the villains left behind, and then... Oh no! It's one of these games where you have to collect a certain amount of the MacGuffin to go on. And if you don't, it's back to the previous levels to look again. You know, a lot of people hated this in a game like Super Mario 3D World, but at the very least, you can say that it was a fun enough game that going back to the previous levels to hunt for the stars wasn't so bad. Here, it's just not fun at all the first time, so why go back? The platform levels are just too straightforward and the water levels are just too fast. So this is where I decided to end things and move forward. I checked online for the levels I didn't play and I found out the game was about an hour and 30 minutes long. For a GameCube game, that's pretty pathetic, although I don't mind shorter games as long as the game is good. And Tarzan Untamed is not good. Surprisingly, Tarzan continued to have some presence in video games after Tarzan Untamed. The final game to be a straight up Disney's Tarzan game would be Tarzan Return to the Jungle for the Game Boy Advance. Ah! 
Wow, I didn't know they put The Legend of Tarzan on Game Boy Advance video. Nah, it's an actual game. A follow-up to the handheld Tarzan game on Game Boy Color released during the movie. And as a game goes, it's about as average as a licensed game on Game Boy Advance can get. And then afterwards, Tarzan would cameo in two other Disney crossover games. Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure, a Tony Hawk clone that straight up took the engine from Pro Skater 4 and slapped Disney characters in it. But of course, probably Tarzan's biggest inclusion in a video game to date, the first Kingdom Hearts, where Sora and company travel to the world of Deep Jungle, recreating scenes from the movie. Infamously, in the follow-up Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, a game that included every level from the first one, did not have Deep Jungle Return and no Tarzan representation ever reappeared in any of the follow-up games. Well, it's time to get into the fact that unlike a lot of Disney properties, whether they be public domain or original characters, Tarzan was one of the few that was not in the public domain and as far as I know is still owned by a company, Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated. Disney's contract with ERB was running up and it was clear the Tarzan fad was coming to an end. Disney would make a few more products in a last ditch effort for the shrinking Tarzan fan base, with Tarzan 2, a prequel entry into Disney's direct DVD Legacy in 2005, and one of the most pointless things I've ever watched. And in 2006, with a stage musical recreation much like a lot of other Disney films that wrapped up quickly in 2007. And that would be the Disney's Tarzan franchise, until Disney pumps out a lame ass live action remake sometime in the future. I understand that there may be more possibilities with Tarzan to tell, I mean the book series spawned like 24 books written by Burroughs himself, but it's clear Disney's take was very limited and most of the products that came from it were honestly lackluster and forgettable. But when it comes down to it, there's still a good movie attached, and it's always fun to go back and rewatch and share with newer generations. Maybe wait until they're a little older because of Clayton's death. Ugh. Oh yeah, that's right, I forgot. There was a developer attached to Tarzan Untamed, right? Well, it was published by Ubisoft and developed by Ubisoft's Canadian team, Ubisoft Montreal, who coincidentally made another licensed game that also ended up as a launch title for the GameCube. But is it better or worse than Tarzan Untamed? We'll find out next time.